What if the world's second largest economy just made a move that could upend the entire global tech order, and hardly anyone is talking about it? What if China's dramatic 10.9% drop in semiconductor imports isn't just a random data point, but the opening signal of a massive strategic shift already in motion? For months, experts have been speculating, why is China suddenly buying far fewer chips from the rest of the world? Is it just a routine market correction, or is there something deeper happening here, something coordinated, deliberate, and far-reaching? Because if you look closer, this isn't just about trade. It's not just about numbers on a chart. It's about power, leverage, and a reshaping of global technology itself. And what most people don't realize is that we might be watching one of the biggest strategic pivots in modern industrial history unfold right now. The ripple effects could transform supply chains, technological sovereignty, and even the balance of geopolitical power. If you work in tech, finance, policy, or global markets, this directly affects your world, even if it doesn't seem like it yet. Let's get into it. According to newly released customs data, China's semiconductor imports plunged 10.9% year over year. That's not a dip, it's a tectonic shift. We're talking about billions of dollars wiped from the bottom lines of major global chip makers like Intel, Qualcomm, Nvidia, and Samsung. This drop isn't just a line on a graph. It sent tremors through boardrooms in Silicon Valley, policy circles in Washington, and financial markets worldwide. But here's the thing. It's not happening in a vacuum. This is part of a broader, long-term pattern that's been quietly building for years. And now it's accelerating. To understand what's really going on, you need to zoom out. Semiconductors are the beating heart of the digital age. They're inside your phone, your car, your servers, your satellites, your weapon systems. And for decades, China has been the world's biggest buyer of these tiny critical components, spending hundreds of billions annually to fuel its rise as a tech superpower. But suddenly that behavior has shifted. Not because demand has dried up, not because their economy is collapsing, but because the game plan has changed. And here's what most headlines miss entirely. This decline in chip imports isn't just a response to external pressures. It's a calculated move in a much bigger strategy, a move rooted in long-term resilience and independence. For years, under the banner of the Made in China 2025 initiative, Beijing has been pouring hundreds of billions of dollars into one core goal, semiconductor self-sufficiency. This isn't just policy, it's doctrine national strategy, and the scale of their investment has been staggering. New fabs, state-backed chip companies, R&D pipelines, government subsidies, and strategic acquisitions. But the really fascinating piece, this isn't just about replacing foreign chips with domestic ones. It's far more nuanced and far more ambitious. Intelligence reports now suggest that China has been quietly stockpiling chips behind the scenes for years. Building up reserves, not unlike strategic oil stockpiles, designed to insulate them from future shocks and sanctions. So what if this drop in imports isn't because they need fewer chips, but because they've already secured what they need? And now the real shift begins. Because Chinese chipmakers aren't just playing catch-up anymore. In some areas, they're starting to outperform expectations. They're pushing forward in advanced processing units, specialized AI chips, and next-gen designs that hint at long-term competitiveness. Suddenly, the conversation is no longer about when China might get there, but whether they're already further along than anyone realized. And if China succeeds in building a fully self-sufficient semiconductor ecosystem, the global tech balance won't just tilt, it'll flip. A China that no longer depends on Western chips is a China that can control its own digital destiny. That's a massive shift in leverage. No more dependency. No more vulnerability to sanctions. No more scrambling for alternatives in the face of export bans. But that's only one layer of the story. The deeper truth is that what we're seeing isn't just an economic adjustment. It's a blueprint for geopolitical transformation. This is technology as strategy, as a weapon, as an insurance policy against future conflict and coercion. And it's working. Western governments, especially the U.S., have responded with increasingly aggressive export controls, tighter restrictions on advanced chip technologies, AI processors, lithography tools. The logic is clear. Slow China down. Contain the threat. Protect the lead. But in a striking twist, those very restrictions may be having the opposite effect. They've lit a fire under China's innovation engine, forcing the country to go all in on self-reliance. It's a paradox that few in the West are willing to confront. The more pressure applied, the more determined the response. Because China isn't just trying to shield itself from the outside world. It's preparing to lead it. Industry insiders are now whispering about unexpected breakthroughs in quantum computing, AI acceleration, and chip manufacturing technologies that could in some cases, leapfrog the current state of the art in the West. We're no longer just talking about catching up. We're talking about changing the game. So the real question isn't if China reaches semiconductor independence. 
It's when, and what happens to the global order when that line is crossed. But there's more, much more. Because what if this shift in chip imports isn't just about economic security or technological pride? What if it's part of something far bigger, a comprehensive plan to reinvent how the global tech ecosystem functions altogether? According to recent intelligence from multiple credible sources, China's chip strategy is not just about building more fabs or copying what already exists. It's a three-pronged offensive aimed at reshaping the future of semiconductors themselves. First, of course, is the physical capacity, domestic manufacturing. That's already underway, with a rapidly expanding network of fabrication facilities across the country, many of them built at record speed, equipped with cutting-edge technology. Second, and far more quietly, China has been systematically recruiting the world's top semiconductor talent. Engineers, designers, lithography experts, fabrication veterans. They're being offered world-class labs, virtually unlimited resources, and a mandate to innovate without red tape. The goal? To absorb global knowledge and build something uniquely Chinese. And the third prong? Innovation itself, not replication. China isn't just aiming to make the same chips everyone else is making. They're trying to rethink what chips are for, how they're designed, and how they'll shape the next wave of AI, quantum tech, and beyond. This isn't a catch-up race anymore. It's a divergence, and the world should be paying attention. Because the shift we're witnessing isn't just an economic trend. It's the dawn of a new phase in technological warfare. Whoever controls the chip controls the code. Whoever controls the code controls the future. Over the past few years, a quiet but powerful shift has been taking place in the global semiconductor landscape. Former top-level executives and engineers from industry giants like TSMC, Intel, and Samsung have been making their way to Chinese semiconductor companies. These are not just job changes. They represent a transfer of decades of deep technical expertise, hard-won experience, and, in many cases, highly proprietary knowledge. On the surface, it might seem like part of the normal ebb and flow of talent across borders, but what's really happening is something far more strategic and far more consequential. Because while much of the world has been focused on China's attempts to catch up in conventional semiconductor manufacturing, the real story is unfolding in the shadows. China isn't just trying to replicate existing chip technology. It's investing heavily in something entirely different. Something that could make today's most advanced silicon chips look outdated. Behind closed doors, China is pouring billions into developing a new generation of semiconductors, built not on conventional architectures, but on radical alternatives like photonic chips that transmit data using light, quantum processors that leverage quantum states for computational power and even bio-integrated circuits that blur the line between biology and computing. These aren't just futuristic concepts anymore. They're working prototypes, and China is betting big that these will define the next era of global computing. If these efforts succeed, the implications will be staggering. China would no longer be playing catch-up. It would be setting the pace. Rather than simply reducing dependence on Western technology, it would leapfrog it entirely, establishing itself as the world's leader in a fundamentally new kind of computing. This isn't just technological ambition, it's geopolitical strategy, and it's unfolding much faster than most of the world realizes. Consider this, recent data shows a 10.9% decline in China's chip imports. At first glance, it sounds like a modest success in localization, a shift toward self-reliance. But this decline isn't primarily about swapping foreign chips for Chinese-made equivalents. It's about something deeper, something more transformative. It's about building an entirely new foundation for global semiconductor dominance and the pace of that transformation is accelerating. Emerging intelligence, including satellite imagery, supply chain activity, and internal industry reports, points to the existence of a new class of semiconductor manufacturing facilities in China. On paper, these facilities are listed as research centers, but in reality, they're housing pilot production lines using processes that are completely different from anything in the West. These aren't just alternative ways to make chips. They represent a complete reinvention of the manufacturing paradigm. Early evidence suggests that these techniques could significantly reduce both the cost and complexity of chip production, while simultaneously pushing the boundaries of performance, efficiency, and form factor. And what's more, internal documents leaked from within Chinese semiconductor firms suggest a bold and aggressive timeline. China plans to bring these new technologies to market within the next 12 to 18 months. Not in 10 years, not in some distant future, but imminently soon enough to disrupt the current global semiconductor market in real time. The aim is not just competition, it's eradication of the old model. The documents make it clear. The objective is to make conventional semiconductor technologies obsolete, not by direct confrontation, but by shifting the playing field entirely. 
This would explain the declining chip imports. China isn't just trimming its reliance on Western chips. It's preparing to replace the entire global standard with a new one, one that it controls. A standard defined by its own designs, its own manufacturing processes, and its own ecosystem of suppliers, developers, and customers. And if that happens, China wouldn't just catch up. It would pull ahead by an entire technological generation. For Western semiconductor companies, the long-standing titans of this industry, the threat is existential. Businesses that have dominated the space for decades could find themselves competing against technologies they neither anticipated nor fully understand. Investors would have to reevaluate everything. Product roadmaps, R&D investments, competitive positioning, and long-term viability. The ripple effects across stock markets would be immediate and potentially severe. The entire economic foundation built on today's semiconductor supply chains could begin to shift, bringing volatility and uncertainty to sectors far beyond tech alone. And it doesn't stop at the market level. The global geopolitical balance of technological power could be profoundly disrupted. For years, Western powers, particularly the US and its allies, have relied on dominance in chip design and fabrication as a cornerstone of their strategic and economic influence. But if China manages to define the next generation of computing technology, and if that technology becomes the new global standard, then the center of gravity could move decisively eastward. The world might no longer revolve around TSMC, Intel, or ASML. It could start revolving around a new generation of Chinese firms that the West has yet to fully understand or take seriously. This shift could trigger a broader fragmentation of the global tech ecosystem. Instead of a shared, interconnected semiconductor market, we could see the emergence of two competing spheres, one led by China, the other by the West. These wouldn't just be supply chains. They'd be separate technological universes, with different standards, protocols, capabilities, and even philosophical approaches to what computing should be. Countries around the world would face difficult choices about which ecosystem to align with, creating a new kind of technological non-alignment, or forced allegiance. The age of global tech unification could come to an end, so the most important question right now isn't whether this transformation is happening. It's how the rest of the world will respond. Will Western nations invest more aggressively in their own next-generation chip technologies? Will they double down on restrictions and export controls to slow China's progress? Will they attempt to forge new alliances, pool research funding, or nationalize critical infrastructure to retain an edge? Or will they, despite the tensions, seek ways to collaborate? Not just for economic reasons, but to prevent a fragmented tech landscape that could lead to increased instability. What's happening with China's chip import decline is far more than a trade statistic. It's a signal. A warning. A clue about what's coming next. The real story isn't about fewer chips being bought. It's about the fundamental redefinition of what chips are, how they're made, and who controls their future. And if these developments continue to accelerate, we may be standing on the edge of the biggest technological power shift of the 21st century. Now the conversation turns to you. Have you seen changes in your industry, business, or supply chain that reflect this global realignment? What do you think the response should be? Innovation, regulation, or cooperation? And what parts of this emerging revolution would you like us to explore next? Share your thoughts in the comments. If this resonated with you, make sure to like, subscribe, and stay connected. Because this is just the beginning. The semiconductor revolution is no longer a possibility. It's underway. And the next chapter is coming fast.